Hello everybody, welcome to Oscar Rossi, but subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and drop a like on this video. I'm trying to hit 100k subscribers on this channel by the end of the playoffs, so your subscription will be much appreciated. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second, it makes a massive difference in how the video performs in the YouTube algorithm. Uh, if the shot looks a little bit weird, this is a new camera and hopefully it's focused. Uh, I've tested it multiple times. If it's not now, well, it is what it is. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually been on this channel and I apologize for that, it's been almost 11 days. Uh, just kind of let shit slip away from me and one of the main reasons why that has been the case is Exactly what made today's game actually nice, which is that there have just been so many blowouts I saw a stat on Twitter today. That was that uh, In the last the, the last game that ended with less than a double-digit deficit was now nine days ago uh, but then of course this game today um is a non double digit lead although it was just a nine point difference in the end um this is a weird game because it basically was it was like two different blowouts in two different halves so the mavericks blew out the warriors in the first half and the warriors blew out the mavericks in the second half and that ended up being uh who won it because uh dallas scored 70 points in the first half to the warriors 50 something and the uh, Mavericks scored 40 to 45 to the uh, to the Warriors 68. So it really was one team dom dominated one half, one team dominated the other, and the Warriors ended up coming on top overall uh, as they were dominated just slightly less. Um, so that was really the main story with this game, of course, to break down uh, all the individual stuff. I'm going to go over it relatively quickly because I'm probably going to talk about a few games in a few series since, again, it's been uh, 11 days since I've been on here. Um, Reggie Bullock had himself a really good game, Luka Doncic had himself a really good game, and Jalen Brunson had himself a really good game, and that's really all there is to say in terms of performance from the Dallas Mavericks because no one else really did much. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith was fine, but I feel like he should have been more aggressive. Uh, he keeps doing this thing that really pisses me off, which is he passes up open three-pointers even though he's a good three-point shooter. Uh, I think sometimes his confidence is not as high as it should be, and it is very annoying. Uh, Luka Doncic really dominated the first quarter and then kind of chilled for the next two quarters. And then it was... Uh Basically, he checked in the game when the Warriors had already made the comeback, and it was like, he has to take over, and he did a good job of it. Uh, the problem then became that the Mavericks could not get a stop to save their lives. Uh, as the game was like a six to nine point deficit as it kept switching up around there, uh, in that territory, pretty much it was a back and forth every possession. Like the, the Mavericks were scoring, I was like, okay. Get a stop now so that you can make a comeback. They wouldn't get a stop. They'd come down to the court. Luka would hit a three over like two defenders. Okay, get a stop now. They didn't do it. For literally seven straight possessions, the Warriors scored on the Mavericks. It was pathetic. And then the, the possession where the Mavericks finally got a fucking stop, they didn't score on the other end. So, uh... Really came down to defense of this one. The Mavericks defense just completely collapsed in the fourth quarter. And a lot of that uh, was Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry was fantastic in this fourth quarter. He didn't really do much like before this. He was having a, he was having a good game, but he wasn't like standing out. It was just a pretty typical, yeah, Steph was playing fine type of thing. Uh, he stood out in the fourth quarter. He had multiple shots, really nice drives. And then the thing that is going to stand out and be iconic from this game was uh, pump fake. Luka goes by him, gets open for three, shoots it while the ball is in the air, says night, night. The ball goes in, puts the hands to his head to signify that he's sleeping. Uh, just brutal for uh, a very iconic, very sociopathic on his part. Uh, my favorite part about this series thus far is that it's basically just two absolute psychopaths going back and forth. Luka Doncic and Stephen Curry are both the type of guys who will cut your throat and smile at you while they're doing it. Um, outside of that, for this game, Jordan Poole was fantastic, uh, but really the big standout other than Steph, of course, Kevon Looney, uh, 10 for 14 from the field, 12 rebounds, 21 points overall. 
um, basically all of it was just pick and rolls and uh, putbacks. But hey, uh, he did the dirty work, and there was so much dirty work in this game that it resulted in 21 points. Um, so yeah, that's this game. Um, as for the series as a whole, I'm going to do something about the rest of the series tomorrow on my main channel. But yeah, uh, I am definitely concerned about Dallas for this one. Of course, Dallas had a huge lead in this one and they blew that lead. I don't think that means the series is over like I'm sure people will declare because ultimately this was two wins on the home floor and Dallas could very easily just match that on their own home floor. And if I was going to predict, I'd actually say that game three is probably a pretty convincing win by Dallas because they have been punched in the mouth and then bounced back really hard a couple of times in this postseason now. Um, that said, yeah, uh, very big win by the Warriors. And I was planning on making a video on my main channel at some point about my concerns about the Warriors in this postseason. Um, those concerns have kind of dissipated. They have been great in these two games and... Uh, not so much worried about this team anymore. I think, uh, you know, regardless of who they face, whether it's Dallas or whoever else after this, uh, I think they have just as good a shot as anybody. I, I had some concerns about them because the Memphis series was kind of rough to get out of and it should have been uh, a lot better for the Warriors than it was, but uh, not really feeling those concerns anymore. That said, haven't talked on this channel in a while, so let me just quickly go over. Uh, I'm not going to go over game one of the Celtics Heat game because I talked about that over on my main channel. But game two, kind of everything I predicted came to light, which was like, I know their defense is just going to be way better as soon as Marcus Smart and Al Horford is there. Not that that's a bold prediction. Shock of all shocks, uh, having your, two of your five best defenders on the floor is helpful. But uh, really, Marcus was just as much helpful offensively because he damn near had a triple-double with 24 points, 9 rebounds, and 12 assists. Um, Jalen Brown had more of a bounce-back game. I mentioned that in Game 1 he was not amazing. Uh, Tatum was cool. Uh, Grant Williams was cool. Really, this is a pretty uh, well-rounded effort. And then on the heat end of things, Jimmy Butler was good again. Gabe Vincent was good again, which I said after game one. I was like, I don't know how much you can rely on Gabe Vincent to be a real source of offense for yourself here. And Victor Oladipo, uh, actually, he shot worse than I thought. But I guess he got to the free throw line a ton. So I guess that kind of makes up for it. But standout negative here, Bam Adebayo. Uh, six rebounds and, or sorry, nine rebounds and six points, three for six from the field. Why is this guy shooting the ball six times? Bam Adebayo legitimately has creating ability and also just within the flow of the offense should be getting plenty of shots, but he's just kind of there offensively. And it's really concerning because this is your all-star big man and he's just not showing up right now. Uh, it, in game one, it ended up not mattering, but he also didn't show up in that one. So Bam needs to be doing more in this series and it's going to be really concerning for the Heat and they're really going to have no fucking shot at winning the series if he continues to just exist and not actually have that much impact on offense and even on defense. I had some problems with how he played in game one, not as much game two, but either way, uh, the Celtics in game two looked like they're just simply the better team, which is the reason why I picked them to win like as much X's and O's or strategy or the, the game of chess that happens in the playoffs that you want to look at. At the end of the day, um, I just think the Celtics are a better team and that's going to be the difference maker. Um, but the Heat are not doing themselves any favors in this one, specifically Bam Adebayo. Um, Warriors uh, Mavericks game one kind of put to bed a lot of my concerns about the Warriors game two did it even more so. Uh, the shooting from the Warriors was fantastic, and this was the take of everybody, which is obviously not even really a take. It was the Mavericks were decent at generating open looks, they just didn't go in in this game. Um, they did go in in game two, at least in the first half, and they were a much better team and put up a much better fight, and obviously had a huge lead at that point at one point in the game. So, uh, clearly, it was just a difference of threes going in versus not. I feel like 
Uh, both of these teams' offenses at their best are relatively on a similar tier, but then, of course, Golden State's defense uh, should be a good bit better than the Mavericks. Not that the Mavericks' defense is bad, but the Warriors' defense is just uh, the second best in the playoffs right now. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I wasn't going to talk about game one. So, yeah, that covers my conference finals. Uh, I didn't actually talk about um, the Celtics or the... I didn't talk about the game seven. So, I guess I'll do that real quick. Uh, I was at game seven of Celtics versus Bucks. So, that's part of the reason why. Uh, but now that I am talking about it, it is a tax write-off. So, that's worthy of note. The IRS, pay attention. Um, yeah. The most intense experience I've ever had uh, in terms of like a playoff crowd. This is my fifth playoff game, um, but it was easily the loudest crowd that I have ever experienced in my life. Uh, the game, of course, was just a Grant Williams masterclass, and uh, I don't know how much to judge the Bucks for their defensive scheme of like, if Grant Williams beats us, Grant Williams beats us, because, you know, Grant Williams is good, but like, I wouldn't say that a game where he takes 16 or 18 threes is usually good for the Celtics offense, even if he is a good shooter, but fuck it, it worked, uh, and the Bucks really, it was more offense than defense that was their struggle, was no one could hit a shot for the Bucks. it was awful, and then because the spacing was so bad, the Celtics started gambling with it more, and started leaving shooters open more because they just weren't hitting their shots, and this resulted in Giannis having no spacing. And he shot poorly in the second half, even though he was good in the first half as a result. Um, I saw some people blaming him for this loss. Uh, there was really nothing he could do. He could try barreling inside and get a bunch of offensive fouls again. But uh, ultimately, if none of your teammates are going to hit your outside shots, then it's not going to work. I never actually checked the box score. Um, let me do that real quick. I just want to actually see. Yeah, they went four for 33 from outside, which is 12%. Yeah, no, you're uh, you're not going to win that way. So uh, really came down to shooting in that one. And then uh, I did talk about game seven of Maverick Suns over on my uh, second channel. So I don't really need to talk about it on my main channel. So I don't really need to talk about it here. But yeah, uh, hopefully I'm going to start posting here more often. Just checked my bank account and I have been spending recklessly. So it is time to get that back to where it's supposed to be. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> anyways, um, that is it. Goodbye.